to my channel. This week we have Nina Williams. She is currently in Switzerland. She is doing a culinary program, yes? Yes, culinary and, program. Yeah, and her program is for three years and she's in her second year now. Second yes. year. So Nina, give us a brief introduction. Welcome to my channel. Give us a brief <laughs> introduction about you. Well, um, as Desandra said, I'm Nina. I am currently 21 as of July. I am in my second year and Switzerland is a very beautiful country, to be honest. Like, I enjoy living here a lot, but at the same time, it's quite, it's quite expensive. <laughs> but I enjoy, and then with the school, there's a lot of international people you meet. So now I have friends all over the world and I get to learn more about their culture because, um, in school, I am cooking Vietnamese food, which I didn't think I'll be cooking. And I learned so much. I can say very small amount of Vietnamese words. So at this point, I call myself a little multilingual. Because <laughs> all these friends, they speak in their mother tongue sometimes. And you're just like, you pick up a little words. Yeah. But, uh, my free time, I enjoy going by the lake because we have a lake right by the school. I enjoy swimming. We also have a water park. It's not that great, but it, it's worth it. Um, or on the weekends, I work because it's a lot of work we have to do. <laughs> But, you know, for a culinary school, you might be like, what work are you doing? Oh, they like to give us research papers all day. <laughs> wow. Yes. And what's the name of your school? The school is called Culinary Arts Academy Switzerland or Cesaritz Colleges. It's a, it's a part of like a big umbrella group of companies that has Swiss hospitality, international hospitality, culinary and pastry is amazing yes. <laughs> we, we're going to get all into this because this is so interesting i yes. love this okay <laughs> did you always want to study abroad yes <laughs> i have i always wanted to um because i believe that even while jamaica has like a nice culinary culture it's not very open to like different different cultures so like if I went to an international school I know for a fact that I'll probably meet someone from India or Dubai Qatar or even Cyprus which I didn't even know existed before and I could like <laughs> be introduced to their culture and I can get introduced to their foods because I really I always want to go to an international school where there's many 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 cultures that I could learn from and I've always liked uh learning food cooking techniques styles anything from their culture so I enjoyed <laughs> going abroad <laughs> I really wanted to I completely understand and it not it's like yes the education aspect is good but at the same time you get to travel you get to oh, yes, another yes. country you get that yes. live love freedom and you get mm -hmm. to do as the Romans do but not everything because these yeah, Europeans sometimes yes um, no. sometimes Europeans their culture is a little uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a little not okay for me <laughs> everything else is fine <laughs> yeah also why switzerland why didn't you pick somewhere else what appeal what about switzerland appeal the most to you well it really came down to the schools so mm -hmm. i had two schools i wanted to go to there was one in the u.s and one in switzerland and i ended up having to i ended up wanting to go to switzerland more and to show my parents that i wanted to go to switzerland because they thought i was crazy because it's in europe i've never been to europe i am going miles and miles away from jamaica why do you want to go to Switzerland and not somewhere in the U.S. where you have like family members and stuff like that? So I did like this whole PowerPoint presentation and in big and bold letters why I wanted to go to Switzerland. The school offers a dual degree program. So at the end of these three years, I will have two degrees instead of one. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I'll end up with a bachelor's of international business in culinary arts and then a bachelor's of arts in culinary arts. Two degrees. I think that's great. It, it sold me. <laughs> the, the beautiful scenery and their little culture they have here was like on the back burner. I was like, eh, I mean, it's fine. It's great and everything, but I get to do it with two degrees and I was happy. And my parents were like, it makes sense too. <laughs> yeah, you get in the best of both worlds. You don't have mm -hmm. to be going back to school for the business yeah. aspect of it. You get everything all yes. smacked in one. Oh, um, yes, and... Uh, <laughs> And to be honest, I feel like these three years at the school is like too short for everything they want us to do because they do such an intensive program with all the fields in culinary arts where it's crazy because they do the service side. So like wait staff, 
also do like barista training, you do cocktail training. You have, you work in restaurants, both a buffet, a fine dining and like an open kitchen style one. And then the very famous one they have here now, it's called food product development and research, where you have to create a product from scratch based on like limitations that they give requirements that they give you, sorry. And essentially, you have to keep doing trials, videoing it, recording it, explaining it, having a nice PowerPoint presentation on why this trial didn't work to possibly sell on the market. That project is, oh, my God. <laughs> stressing you out. It's stressing me out to the maximum because there's a company called Man um, Products. It's a fragrance and aromatics, fragrance, no, fragrance and flavor company that the school has a partnership with. And essentially, they use the school as like a little uh, a test room for outside man. <laughs> so now we as students have to go make products with their products and then they will come and taste it and tell us whether they like it or not. And based on that, you can possibly want, get a job there if you want or get into their magazine where everyone reads that it's in fragrance and flavor company. Cause they're like, I think, I think it's three major companies and they're the bigger one, especially in Europe. Yeah. And um, it's, or, you can get a nice recommendation letter that uh, from Man Corp Productions to any food industry area you want to go into that, you know, you've done it, they liked it and it was great, but I, I realized I don't like food product development or any research part of it. <laughs> I am dying. <laughs> but the pressure is getting worse. And I haven't even told you about paste yet. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> listen <laughs> they believe as a culinary student I want to learn all parts of pastry I am dying because we learn first you learn the basic ones you can make tarts you can make traditional uh, Swiss um Swiss and French desserts so like a tarte tatan which essentially is an apple tart I don't know why it's tarte tatan it's kind of crazy it's an apple tart or you learn how to make breads and then Last term, they're like, let's add even more problems. We're going to show you how to work with sugar. <sighs> like, don't feel my hands. <laughs> you have to pull the hot sugar. So, you know, like those nice sugar show pieces oh, that you yeah. see on like videos and stuff. Yes, we learned how to do it. I, oh my God, I will send you a picture of what I had to make. And <laughs> I cried in that class. I was, I was tears. <laughs> people are like oh sugar it's pretty it's nice but to work with it it's it's so fragile like when you're doing really fine details it any amount of pressure you put on it it collapses completely I was like oh. you yeah, know I think two times my showpiece nearly fell and I I told the chef I was like chef no <laughs> and then now it's chocolate chocolate is even worse but I still prefer it over um Sugar, because at least I can feel my hands. But with chocolate now, my hands are too warm. <laughs> so every time I add stuff to my chocolate showpiece, it melts Man. and breaks and cracks. And Missy said this has stress your girl. Oh my <laughs> god. Well, you know, if I want to go in the business, I have to learn. <laughs> yeah. I have to learn all parts. Okay. Man. Oh. I've so is it a case where you get to pick what subjects you do in a year or it's just set programs? The set program. Mm -hmm. However, what they do do is um, if a lot of students come to the program and tell them like, you know, I want this instead of this, they will do like a big survey between everyone. Yeah. And then they'll ask, sorry. And then they'll ask, what do you want to do? Do you prefer this course over this course? And then it will change. But mm -hmm. no, these courses are set in stone. You cannot pick, choose and refuse. Which I so badly wanted to do. Oh. <laughs> but I can't. And maybe because it's so short. So yeah. they have to like make yeah. sure that you get everything in there. So if they give you guys a chance to pick, yeah. maybe we'll cover everything. That's uh, that's the main reason. Yeah. Which is fine, but it's it's too much in like the little short time we have. Cause then essentially we do nine to six months, no, sorry, six to nine months of school. And then we have to go on a four to six month internship. Because a part of your degree is to go on two four to six month internships to learn how the work world goes. And then you come back to school and you learn again. Yeah. So like even on those internships, you really see the the the, the backside of like the culinary world. Well, you have like all the fancy foods. I'm probably running a double shift three days in a row. <laughs> yes. No sleep. Season. No sleep. No sleep. 
Sleep is for the week. <laughs> so wait, do you get to do your internships outside of Switzerland? Or? Yes, well, uh, yes. Um, the one I did was in the U.S. It was in USA. Yes, I went to this little town called Asheville in North Carolina. Very small. I didn't even know that place existed. And I worked on this big estate called Biltmore Estates. It was nice. I enjoyed it. But working is working, you know? <laughs> yeah, I get you. I get you. Working is working. Okay, so what is your favorite course that you've done so far? Mm, my favorite course would be... Okay, so it's a practical course mm -hmm. called Fine Dining. Um, I'm currently doing it this term. And there's a kitchen on campus called Hashtag Food Inspired. And essentially, you get to create, it's your restaurant for the day, mm -hmm. and you create something you want to eat. And it can be a, a seven course, a six course, a five course menu, as many courses as you want. But you have to choose within an hour. And I like this course because I can literally cook whatever I want. If I said I want to cook jerk chicken, he goes, yes, go cook jerk chicken. And I serve it to the guests, yes, so like... Next week, Wednesday, for me, it's my chef of the day. So essentially, I've prepared an all Jamaican menu and I'm going to give it to these humans here to give them a proper cultural awareness yeah. <laughs> about Jamaican cuisine. It's not only about the, the illegal, uh, not illegal, because it's illegal hair, the uh, marijuana hair, because that's all I'm known for, honestly. Oh, you're from Jamaica? That's great. And I'm like, hey, sir, Listen. sir, sir. Listen. There's more things to Jamaica than that. <laughs> I know firsthand what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> students approach me asking me if I, if I have it. And I'm yes. like, we're in medical school. Exactly. What? <laughs> and they're like, so you, so you, they're like, oh, you know, all of this and that. So you're from Jamaica, right? And he's like, so do you have anything? And I was like, what do you mean? Them, I'm off the plate. But Nina, they must take it by with their locks. Oh, definitely. Jesus. Everybody. And I'm like... Can I feel your hair? Oh, gee, so you're a Rasta man. Like, no, I don't practice in the Rasta foreign um, religion. <laughs> Someone even tried to try, uh, I don't know where they heard it. Someone said I and I to me at one point, and I was like, sir, <laughs> sir. Yeah, where do you know this from? <laughs> because you see, in Ukraine, they they have this song called, is a, it named Jamaica something? Like, and mm -hmm. when they see you, like, they mm -hmm. know that we're Jamaicans. So, like, when they see us, they, like, burst out singing the song. Oh. Or right. if they find out we're Jamaicans, they go, oh, Jamaica. And then they start yes, singing yes. the song, and you're just like, I don't <laughs> know that song, you know, sir. Like, but if no. you can't really make them know that because they're going to feel away, so they will just make them sing. So. <laughs> if I, my instance for that is um, Skilly Bang. For some unknown reason, Skilly Bang is known on this campus. <laughs> Yes, I did not know who Skilly Bang was until I came to the campus. <laughs> and I was like, who? <laughs> you don't know Skilly? And I was like, Skilly? <laughs> Skilly Bang. And their favorite line from the, I don't even know the name of the song. It goes, wap, 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 wap. And I'm like, Nina, Nina when last year come Jamaica? Two years ago. <laughs> Two years ago. Maybe because you're just so engrossed in school. You're not really know what's happening. I'll give it. I really a don't. I really don't. <laughs> My friends don't use their social medias, so I can't even tell what's happening at parties. I'm like, friends, go out to go party. Let me see. Mm -hmm. All of them. I want to stay at home. I'm tired. I want to sleep. And I'm like, you're not. You're not living my dream. Like I use you to keep me updated. My sister does not keep me updated. What does she do? She stays inside her house. Does nothing. Damn. Damn. Get your man. Okay. Yeah. How many courses do you do per year? Per year, mm -hmm. we do five to seven courses. It depends on which, we call them terms here, but it's like three months. They break each semester into like three month um blocks. Mm -hmm. And then essentially, you between those three month blocks, you have like five to seven courses that you might do. So it's really compact very very compact and it's it's because i don't know why the bachelor's program is not four years because it'd make more sense if it was four years um but it's very 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 compact and they teach everything it ranges from accounting to like restaurant accounting to inventory and uh food management you have to learn HACCP, which is like a food safety regulation kind of thing. Yeah. And then you also have to learn like um research topics. So like
applied research. You also have to learn how to present yourself at an interview. So you call that one like a business communication. So they really, they, they, they do everything. <laughs> mm. Everything they can within those three years to make you very profitable on the market because it also improves their name. <laughs> Okay, no, I understand what is happening. So, what's the school fee? So, school fee for me because I have like a partial scholarship. Mm, congrats! About, yes, thank you. <laughs> they literally just said, "Oh, you're from Jamaica here." I was like, "Yes, <laughs> that's literally it." <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> you hear that, guys? You hear that? You hear what you're saying? Okay. God. Yes, Nina. Oh, you're from Jamaica. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, great. It proves our um diversity counts. And I was like, all right, here's your scholarship. It's like that. It's like, thank you. That's great. That's great. So that scholarship takes about takes off three thousand five hundred francs, and then I pay around eighteen thousand francs. Now in U.S. dollars, I really don't know, but I think Swiss franc to USD is like one point one something. So it's roughly, I pay roughly. Let's just call it eighteen thousand five hundred. Ah, Swiss francs doesn't seem like a lot, but when you convert it uh, and you convert and convert to Jamaica, now it's a it's a nice price. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get you. <laughs> okay. Uh, was it hard uh assimilating into the Swiss culture? Yes, they only speak French or German here. <laughs> so they don't speak Swiss. Swiss is not a no. language. No, they have this. It's called Swiss German, which is like a very, very like they mixed. German with French and then there's this um language is kind of dead now it's spoken in the Swiss Alps called Romanash I really don't know what it sounds like I've never heard of it but it's like Swiss German is like a mixture of all of that together and it sounds really weird <laughs> I don't know it but um I wouldn't try it because I can't even speak German <laughs> I can't I can't say I, can't, I, I took French class instead of German classes <laughs> Yeah, because I live in the French, because Switzerland, essentially, the language is divided, divided like the country. Oh. So where I live currently is in the French side. So it's easier, it would make more sense for me to learn French. So I'm in the French side, I can communicate with the people down by, they have like this vendor shop kind of thing that we can buy food from. It's easier if I learn French to communicate with them. But then for my final year, I'm going to the German side of um, Switzerland. So now I'm going to have to learn some German. Yeah. <laughs> to ask things, yeah. But um, there is Swiss German. There are videos there that you hear Swiss German. But when you compare Swiss German and they call it High German, which is Germany, German, sorry, yeah. like regular German from Germany, um, it sounds pretty different. Wow. So yeah, so a lot of people that speak Swiss German cannot go to Germany and speak German. So there's like an actual language course they have to do to speak German. <laughs> you know that's so crazy. You know many European countries are very similar. Because yeah. in in Ukraine, it's not really German or French, but it's mm -hmm. more of one side of the country speaks Russian and one mm -hmm. side speaks Ukrainian. So I'm realizing that it's a it's a thing in these European yes. countries where yes. the languages are split in the country. Mm -hmm. so, yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. It is. Uh, was it hard learning the language? Um. Yes, to an mm -hmm. extent. <clears throat> Because you know, in um, in French, they have like one word, and one word is pronounced the same way, all different for like different things. And I just asked my teacher, yeah. and I was like, you know, how do I know what this person is talking about if this word means two different things? She's like, use context. Context, yeah, yeah. Like, what? I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> use context, and I was like, okay, cool. You did Spanish in high yeah. school. I did Spanish, I didn't do French. <laughs> uh, maybe that's why that's why it's such a shock to you. And I was like, I was like, oh my God. And then my teacher, because we used um, we basically learned a lot of um food-related French words and like asking stuff. And I remember one class, <laughs> um, because there are so many different cultures and certain syllables, mouth movements, or like things like that, it's hard for other countries to um say. So there's like one class that we spent an hour pronouncing the word va. <laughs> she's like not a va, va. And I'm like oh my god I'm going to die <laughs> literally she's like don't it's not a sad face you have to be happy with it be happy you know? mm. so you learn like you learn like let me see my friends do right you learn like je voudrais 
Yeah. I would like. Yeah, du goudre au vert. Oh. Yeah. Oh my God, I forgot. <laughs> I want a glass of water. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I'm done. <laughs> okay, do you have any advice for students who are looking to go abroad, maybe to a country that doesn't speak English? What advice do you have for them to get them to learn the language of the country that they're going to? So my first advice is you should look if your school offers language courses. Mm -hmm. My school, it is mandatory you had to do a language because you're coming to a country, even though it's an English speaking school, you have to, it's an English based school. You're going to a country that does not like speaking English at all. <laughs> I at all. <laughs> like, um, so you should try and see if they have it. If they don't have it, I say learn as much as you can whether through Duolingo or find like a language course on in the country. So um, I know some people, they go outside of the school too to um, further understand French. I did not do that. I said, you know what? I learned enough. I can read in French. I'm fine. <laughs> I can read. I can say a few words. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. I would ask you to also learn the language. It's really important because now I have to go learn German. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, it's not gonna learn German. So at this point, I feel like I can call myself a polyglot to an extent. Period. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> <Tell me so. laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but German I mean, isn't that bad. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, German isn't that bad. No, it's not. It's not. I can um I could count at one point because I had a German roommate, but she used to laugh at my pronunciations. Because she's like, there's like this letter, it's like a it's like a throaty ch. And for some reason, my brain could not accommodate that mm. syllable. It used to laugh at me. And I was like, I'm trying. <laughs> I understand. But I know one German word, which is seven. It's seven. So that's all I know. <laughs> I don't say seven. And ein is one. Oh, wait, no. I learned ein Bier. <laughs>